Hi folks, this is Lee Murphy. I am the artist of ArtByLeeMurphy.com and I am starting this series as a way to provide a video online version of a catalog raison a of what, why, how it is what I do what I do. Um, starting with this particular painting here of Pont de Surf. This one was done in 2020. Obviously, with, like with a lot of other artists I know, they don't really, didn't really do many uh, artworks because of the general malaise in the art world. Um, and this is part of the reason why I'm putting my work up here online is to pray, maybe offer some solutions on things. Uh, this particular painting is 36 by 48. It's an oil on canvas. Um, a lot of times I just do things that because of the way the light just hits it and the moment I'm in at the time, there's really no reason to have any particular message, uh, any heavy philosophical message for a painting in order to do it. It's just enjoying the moment and the time you want to share it with other people. Um, this particular one, um, once again, I'm not a big fan of, of naming paintings, uh, and I may have to in the future because artists and collectors like to see that. And when it comes to cataloging shows, it helps to clarify um, details, especially when you have a lot of art in shows. Another part of the reason why I wanted to start doing this series is to share the knowledge I have learned over the years of me being a full-time artist. And in this particular um, episode, I wanted to shine a little bit of light on getting into juried art shows, how to get into a juried art show. And I think the better question is, is why do you want to get into a jury art show? Through the years, I have been in more jury art shows than I can count. I don't even know how many awards I've won in jury art shows all over the world, um, mostly in the United States. And you know, usually the international shows are ones you send things to, and that's really not, <laughs> in hindsight, it's not really um, cost effective. And a lot of shows really aren't. Um, but that's once again, you get back to the point of why do you want to be in a jury art show? Not only have I been in um, quite a few, I've also curated and juried and been the selector of awards judge for uh, art shows, everything from a small neighborhood uh, event to something once again international. And the very first piece of advice I would give you on getting into a juried show is follow the directions. It's as simple as that. This is not a time for the dog ate my homework or being an artist, you know, a flaky artist who's always pushing the rules and limitations. Follow the directions. Slide jury, well, they don't do slides anymore. Uh, art show juries, once again, are almost always uh, when you send in JPEGs of your work. And art show juries are almost always volunteers and they have a lot to do and you will be doing them a great favor if you don't follow the directions because that gives them a very good way to jury you out, reject you. It's funny how artists uh, have a hard problem with the word of rejection. We all do, we're humans. But, you know, we sometimes have to come up with euphemisms because a lot of people, myself included, used to really define ourselves by our work. Uh, and that's something for a, a later video. But back to the topic of why do you want to be in an art show? Um, when you're first starting out, it really helps to uh, gain your feet, find who you are, what genre you want to be in, what medium you want to be in, and it does really help for your uh, resume to a point. Uh, but it gets very soon to a point where all we do is seek more validation and turn to competing unhealthily with our fellow artists. And that has effect. It, it definitely does have an effect. Um, and generally not a good one either. But yeah, I can understand the uh, point of validation because a lot of people get into art because, uh, well, any number of reasons too, but to express something within them that may or may not be, have been well received in any other way from the people we grew up around. So that's another topic for another video. Back to the validation thing. Um, once you build your resume and get enough credentials on there, sometimes it's worth thinking really hard where are you going to spend your art show, art show dollars. I mean, it does cost money. There are art fees. 
There are jury fees, there are show fees, there are shipping fees, there are handling fees. Uh, it pays to keep in mind that a lot of juried art shows, their main reason is for income generation for the uh, organization or the facility that is putting it on. Keep that in mind. Um, yes, it's nice to be able to sell your artwork, but a lot of shows, not all, you know, I, not all of them, and I imagine what I have to say is probably going to make little people annoyed because it's an uncomfortable truth in the art world. Uh, art, arts organizations are, have never been well funded. Um, it's income harvesting. When you enter a show, generally there is a fee from anywhere from a few dollars to several hundred dollars just to enter the show. It doesn't mean you get your artwork in a show. Um, and then, depending on the locality and where you are, you may have a shipping fee, you may have a hanging fee. Uh, there's any number of extra, co extra costs, not to mention the cost of making the artwork itself. Um, it pays to keep, you know, your CPA is going to really appreciate you writing all this down and keeping notes of this. And if you ever want to hope to actually make a go of uh, making a living at art, this is, you, you can't afford to ignore all this. Um, you know, so how much is that, that need for validation? Are you willing to pay for it? But, you know, I'm being kind of down on it, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, it's nice to have credentials. Uh, it's nice to be part of um, prestigious shows. And, you know, there's, especially some of the larger national shows, you can network and possibly find other opportunities, but you have to really have to work for those. If you want to be featured in magazines or get uh, material sponsorship, that may be one way to go, but it's not something to count on. And I guess in the today's uh, digital age, there's other ways to find that rather than spending a lot of money hoofing across the continent to um, show a painting or two in a group show. I've been there, I've done it. It's fun, it's rewarding, but it pays to not have, you know, unrealistic expectations of where it's going to get you. And that's one thing to really keep in mind about any sort of uh, juried show. What is your intended outcome from this? What do you see happening beyond this? Is this going to get you in a new market? If you're on the East Coast and there's a big national show on the West Coast and you want to get your work in there, maybe win an award, okay, if you went to get your show, get your work in that show, maybe you do win an award. Does it cover your costs? And then after the show, what is the audience that came to that show? Are you willing to um, do the expense and effort of cultivating that market that's all the way across the continent. It's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, what is the intent afterwards? Uh, validation is a nice thing, but it can, you know, it can be very expensive. Um, these are all things that every artist has to answer for themselves. Um, and in a changing world right now, especially after 2020, a lot of shows are going online. And this is another one, the very caveat artiste, who do you think is going to be visiting those sites online? Uh, in the in the real world, it's very it's almost a cliche for juried art shows. The only people who show up are the artists and their friends and families. And sometimes purely by accident, you may actually have a, a complete stranger wander into these shows, and even more by accident, possibly uh, sell something. Unless the organization itself and the artists all make a big effort to open up that art show to the non-art, uh, you know, the non-art world around them, um, it, your sales are highly unlikely. I'm not going to say anything definite because there's always exceptions to the rules, and I don't doubt that this might get some pushback. But consider yourself, what whoever wants to push back on this, okay? Where is this creating some sort of dissonance in your mind? And, you know, how is that helpful? I mean, it is, there are some uncomfortable truths, but if you can't face them, they're not going to get fixed. So back to the online to art show topic, once again, um, income generating activities. Uh, these organizations, and yes, there is some expense uh, in putting these shows on in the real world and online, but let's face it, if you have an online juried art show, unless you're really, really hawking it in every single social media and every place you can think of to drive traffic, traffic to that, and if the organization's not doing that, your chances are you're not gonna get a lot of traffic to that website. So once again, 
it becomes more of an ego validating thing. And I think a lot of artists are, are rather naive about it because it does suit, it does serve some needs. Uh, and we all really de need to be seen and noticed. And you know, our art is an inner dialogue and it's, you know, it communicates. And the more we think that we're communicating with people through our art, the better it is. Anyhow, this is something to keep in mind when you're considering doing uh, jury art shows online or in the real world. Uh, what is your intent? Where do you think it's going to go? What, what do you expect out of this sort of thing? Um, once you have enough awards and credentials, what is that going to say to the people who are buying your work? In my experience, the people who have been the most supportive of my artwork generally don't put much faith in awards. Um, and when I have judge shows myself, I tell people it's really only one person's opinion. And hopefully it's an educated opinion. And when I was in art festivals myself, we would joke about how if the art show judge has eggs for breakfast, they're going to pick one thing for best of show. If they have pancakes for breakfast, they'll pick another thing for best of show. So it's wise to not place too much value on it. And I mean, I've also known artists who have spent their entire careers slavishly uh, competing for awards and that's all they go after. And I, I, in my experience, I have never yet messed up, met an artist who's made a living off of award money. It's nice. And I, you know, in my particular experience, uh, awards have to be significantly high in value to even cover your costs. And another caveat I would give to artists is pay attention to the small print. There are a number of big shows that will advertise enormous award money. And then you look at the fine print that some of those like a $20,000 award may not be $20,000 in cash it may be an equivalent in advertising red um, pages in some magazine. Is that worth it to you? I can't answer that. You can only answer that yourself. But also keep in mind, very, very important, and I've seen artists run afoul of this every time, the IRS considers that income. Every single dollar you win in awards is income, and you must pay income tax on it. If it is an equivalent merchandise, you still have to pay income tax on the equivalent cash value of it. If you decide you want to uh, partake of an award that is a very expensive magazine article or magazine advertisement, you still have to pay income tax on the equivalent value of that. Uh, once again, keep all these facts in mind before you make your decision on whether or not jury shows are for you. But back to the details of if this is what you want to do, first of all, like I said, follow the directions to a T. Any and all mistakes or anything left out or different from what they ask you for, once again, is a great way for jurors to immediately reject your application and go on to other people who follow the directions. Now, a little bit more detail into it. When you're looking at juried art shows, generally there, there are years before that you can see what was in previous shows. Compare your artwork up against the pictures of the works that have been those shows and they should it should fit in seamlessly. If it stands out anyway, it's a very big chance that you will not get in. Uh, jurors like to have shows that fit together, that they, that they work well as a group. Um, if your works look significantly better, go for bigger shows. Uh, sandbagging does not help you. If you're going into small shows with world-class work just to harvest prize money, that's a dead end. And all it does is make people angry with you. Uh, the show organizers will be probably happy to have your work in there because it boosts the quality of their work, but it doesn't, it doesn't really go anywhere for you. So, you know, if you want to be in a juried show, really have a very critical look at how your work fits in with what has been in those shows in the past. Now, if it's a first annual show, that's a tougher question. I generally stay away from first ever shows because generally they don't have all the bugs worked out. Uh, it, that's up to you to decide for the risk because you may be part of what decides the actual um, flavor of the show. If you become you know, make a standout in there, you may actually have an effect on how the, how those shows go forward, something to keep in mind. So yeah, um, that is another tip. And if you really are getting to where you really want to be in a lot of jury shows, 
it helps that if you have found a show where you have been awarded, pay attention to who the judge is or the jurors. Uh, most of these organizations will hire judges from outside of their membership area for impartiality's stake and just for you know keeping things um, a little bit more interesting and enticing for uh, the competitors because it's nice to know that some fancy or well-known academic or well-known artist has given your work an award. It's, it, that does kind of look nice on a resume. However, if you find a judge who actually likes your work and has given it an award, pay attention to the next shows they're going to judge. Um, it may significantly increase your chances of picking up some more awards. Uh, so these are things to consider and there are things that I wish that I had been told when I was starting out as an artist and this is why I am sharing this forward um, to kind of help with, with people who may not have found these, this, these things out for themselves and improve their lives. Um, this is just a first, well this is the first video in a series of the art philosophy and me describing what it is I do and why I do it. And um, stay tuned for more art philosophy and tips and tricks of what it's like to be an artist in the world today. Thank you very much.